Welcome to Ask April and Cindy from the Travel Collective. This is our destination series. Welcome everybody. I'm so glad you could join us tonight. We have Suzanne Van Atten, who's uh, the author of the Moon Puerto Rico Travel Guide um, about Puerto Rico. And she's here to share with us some of the beautiful things about Puerto Rico. Um, welcome, Suzanne. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Um, so let's just start in and ask why Puerto Rico and what makes Puerto Rico special for you? Besides the fact that Puerto Rico is just a really beautiful place that has um, a huge diversity of attractions and um, natural beauty uh, for a small island, it was a, a very eye-opening experience for me when I went for the first time. I grew up in the suburbs of Charlotte, North Carolina. My vacations growing up were going to the beach every summer and the mountains every fall. But when I was 12, my father um, took a temporary job in Puerto Rico and the whole family went to visit. And I was just enchanted by um, the beauty and the culture. I was really excited to be immersed in a culture that was so radically different from my own. Um, and a short time later, we moved down there and lived for three years. So I've been going back ever since. It's a second home for me. That's beautiful. I'm so glad that you're here to share all those those great stories and things. So it sounds like you've been several times. Do you always go alone or do you go with other folks? And how often do you go? I go, um, I try to go at least once a year. Um, I often go by myself, especially when I'm researching my book. I. I've been working on the book for 12 years. I've just completed the fifth edition. I update it every three years, so I'm constantly going back to update. And so I often go by myself, um, but sometimes I go with friends. Sometimes I rendezvous with friends down there. Um, so it's a little bit of this and that. I've taken my kids there. So right. I always want to share it with everybody. So I encourage people to come. It's a second home, like you said. So do, when you go, do you meet with locals? Do you have local connections and folks that you meet with when you do go down there? I do have a few. I wish I had more, but um, I know um, several hotel owners and restaurant owners that I always check in with every time. And I do have a couple of friends. Um, actually, uh, Carlos Rinaldi Davila is um, a friend of mine that I went to school with when I lived there, and he's a very well-known artist in Puerto Rico. So I always connect with him and his daughter Carla, who's a photographer. and. Um, they always fill me in on all the insider info on what's new and, and, um, and help, um, help keep me apprised of sort of, you know, the concerns and, you know, what's going on politically and those kinds of things that, you know, I wouldn't know as being an outsider. Being an outsider. So you get to have that kind of connection with locals and, and that's an important part. So aside from talking with them and how else do you plan your trip when you plan this most recent one? What are some of the ways that you plan where to go, what to do and how to enjoy Puerto Rico? Well, I of course research online constantly and I, I really like to look for little, little local publications around the island, really go drill down to the granular level on you know neighborhood and community publications and websites and I'll run it through a translator because I do not speak um, I'm not fluent in Spanish I can speak it enough to get by um, so that's been really helpful but the other thing is you know um, talking to bartenders oh, nice. <laughs> bartenders are one of my favorite sources um, uh, I love just stopping in a bar especially when I'm traveling alone pop into a bar usually on an off hour and um, chat up the bartender. I've gotten more fantastic tips that way than anything. Actually, that's really good advice. I know that when I'm traveling, finding someone who's working, like you said, a bartender, who's also kind of paused in their work off times, right? right? Yeah. Then you can usually get a lot of information. I know when I was in Vietnam, we did something similar with the hotel staff. They were mostly college students. But during the weekends or when they were busy, that was not the time to ask. But they would talk for hours if you just stood and, 
you know, right. they wanted to share with you their beautiful country. And so you probably get that when you talk to bartenders there. Absolutely. But they're, you're right. Timing is everything. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, and, and they probably know the area better than anyone else. And they certainly would know where to go. So, I mean, they're local. What a great, what a great tip to tell people to just chat up the bartender on and off uh, hour, right? You know, just go definitely. in. That's definitely. That's good. So do you have any, um, I mean, tips on what to bring and what they need to think about when they're planning the trip to Puerto Rico if someone's planning to go, what they pack? Well, you need, you know, what you always need in the Caribbean, which is sunscreen and a hat, sunglasses, um, bug spray, um, a refillable water bottle, and also an umbrella. People forget <laughs> that those little um, tropical thunderstorms, you know, can be um, really, you know, frog stranglers <laughs> so it's nice to have a, a an umbrella um, and also your cell phone because most um, cell phone service providers um, in the United States um, also service Puerto Rico so there's no roaming charges or anything like that and, and the service is really good down there so that way you can use all your apps and your GPS ways works um, oh, Google cool. Maps works uh, so that's all really helpful. Yeah, and so um, Google Maps works. So do they use the U.S. dollar? They do. Yeah, um, you know, Puerto Rico is part of the United States, so they use the U.S. dollar. They use, um, you know, U.S. Postal Service. Okay. You'll find Walgreens down there. You'll find Marshalls. You know, you'll find a lot of. Um, the stores that we expect here in the United States, um, obviously in the larger towns. Right. If you get out into more remote areas, you're not going to find that. But, um, but yeah, they all use the American dollar. You don't have to have a passport to travel there. Okay. Um, you know, they have VA hospitals. You know, their their medical facilities are um, held to the same standards of the medical facilities in the United States. So. Um, you know, there's all those comforts of the U.S. are, are there. Right. And I, I said, I think that's a good one to add to my list of solo travelers, somebody who's looking to travel for the first time by themselves or um, kind of get out in a exotic location that's not the d domestic United States. But you have some of those things that are the similar. So you don't have it's all that big learning curve. So you feel more comfortable. Yeah. Um, I know that's one of the reasons I chose Belize when I chose Belize as my first solo travel. They speak English, they use the US dollar. There's just a lot of, it makes it easier. So Puerto Rico it, would fit. It really does. Um, and even though Spanish is their official language, I mean, you find so many English speakers everywhere. It's, right. it's not difficult. People would, and most people, it sounds like they're familiar and they're used to people from the United States coming down um, oh, absolutely. And joining them. So they're right. welcoming. So that sounds like a, a yeah. good thing. Used, you know, there used to be two very large military bases down there. They're not, you know, the military bases have been cut back uh -huh. everywhere, uh, including in Puerto Rico. But there used to be very large military presence down there. So, um, so they're so, yeah. familiar with that. That's right. good. And so not to ask the fun questions, what would you tell someone not to miss when they're traveling? I mean, is there locations that you would suggest that people go to? I um, always recommend going to one of the bioluminescent bays. These are um, beautiful little uh, lagoons, um, usually uh, with mangrove, mangrove lagoons. Okay. And okay. Uh, they trap this, um, during high tide, they trap this micro, um, organism that you can't see with the naked eye except if you agitate the water at night when it's very dark the water glows beautiful green blue electric color um, and so you can only see the bio bays by uh, kayaking and you want to go at night when there's no moon and um, it's just an amazing experience there are three bio bays in Puerto Rico only two are really worth your time, in my opinion. Okay. The best one is Mosquito Bay in Vieques, which is a small island off the east coast of Puerto Rico. It's part of Puerto Rico, but it's a separate little island. Um, and then the other one is uh, uh, Laguna Grande in Fajardo, a town that's easy driving distance from San Juan. So whenever I have friends who meet me down there or travel with me, I take them to one of the bio bays because it's such a special experience. 
The other thing I recommend is going to the West Coast because most people gravitate towards San Juan. And San Juan is a fabulous place to go, but it's a big metropolitan city. Um, you know, to really experience, I think, the, the Puerto Rican culture, uh, you want to get away from that big city and go someplace more remote. And the West Coast, to me, has so many different attractions. They do have a bio bay. It's not as strong as the others, but there is a bio bay there. There's also, um, you know, beautiful red cliffs and um, surfing towns that are fun party places and uh, colonial cities like Mayaguez. And um, there's even some desert area in the southwest corner that's um, really it reminds me a lot of Southern California. Wow. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of diversity out there and, and natural beauty. And it's away from the crowds and away from um, so much U.S. influence that you experience in San Juan. Right. So. Right. And we had talked before, there's some history also in Puerto Rico, a lot of historical things to see. If so, if somebody's a history buff, it's an, a, a, another good location to go for that reason as well. Absolutely. There's, um, you know, there's the Spanish history, of course, that's uh, almost 500 years old. Um, so there's, you know, incredible forts and um, wall the walled town of Old San Juan, which is this beautiful, quaint, um, the origins, the first settlement on the island. And it's a wall with cobblestones and gorgeous colonial buildings. Um, and you also, there's a lot of colonial cities there. The Ponce on the southern coast is very gorgeous. But then you also have um, a lot of uh, Native American grounds, the Taino Indians who were there when um, Christopher Columbus <laughs> arrived. Um, uh, there's some really wonderful um, archaeological sites where they are, you know, uncovering um, petroglyphs and tools and, and all kinds of things and, and um, just some beautiful grounds. Um, so yeah, there's tons of history there for sure. That's great. So I didn't ask this before, but I'm going to ask about the food. Is there good food in Puerto Rico, Suzanne? Oh, God. The food is so good. The food is so good. Um, you know, they eat a lot of plantain. They find many, many things to do with plantain. Mafango and um, majuros and tostones. And um, it, it's delicious and filling. Um, but one of my favorite things is the, the street food down there is incredible. Everywhere you go, you will see little kiosks and roadside street vendors and beachside vendors and plaza side vendors selling a, a, an array of fried fritters, you know. Okay. They involve some plantain. They'll have, may have some meat, some cheese, empanadas, you know, those kind of things. Wow. Um, so that's the best. And often it's cooked over a fire, which um, is really kind of neat. So, um, Sounds amazing. I love plantains. Yeah. And plantains are one of those things that can be sweet or savory. That's right. So, that's right. Um, exactly. And I mean, the best rice and beans in the world. I don't know what they do to the rice and beans, but it's just phenomenal. So, yeah, the food's pretty amazing. And then there's also a very high-end um, uh you know, I mean, the foodie movement's huge down there. There's this a really nice food festival they have. I think it's in April. Um, uh, that um, you know, just the really high end chefs, James Beard Award winning chefs, um, who are are um, you know have restaurants there too. So you've got that as well. That's awesome. So food, food history some nature stuff, good stuff to see. So let's ask about some of your, we, we always ask about a travel mishap or a lesson learned that happened during your travels to Puerto Rico. So what you got to share there? I have two from my last trip. I was there just a year ago for five weeks researching this latest edition. And um, the first is I always rent a car from a local car rental agency and I never buy the supplemental insurance um, because I always figure my insurance will cover it and also no accidents going to happen. Um, <laughs> but this time I was uh, having dinner with friends, a very long leisurely dinner with friends in Rincon and when I came out after dinner my car had been hit and run and so the whole back was smashed in 
it was still drivable. So I just kept driving it until I had to turn it in. Because um, for one thing, I was on the complete other side of the island when it happened, where I had to turn it in. So anyway, um, when I took it in, they, they assessed the damage and said it was like $750. And my deductible was 1000 so I had to pay it on the spot. And um, But because I had reserved it with my Amex, I was able to file um, a claim with Amex, and they reimbursed me for every penny of it. So um, there was just confirmation that not getting the supplemental insurance <laughs> is the smart thing to do if you use a card that'll cover it. So I was really happy that that all worked out. Um, and I know there was another thing. Oh my gosh, what was the other thing? I think you were talking about the driving you drove and got lost. Oh, that's right. That's right. So one of my um, missions for this particular trip was to find really remote um, places of natural beauty that I've always heard about, um, like waterfalls and um, rope rope swings. I think you actually have a picture of one that I went to, of Gozalandia. Um, there's a rope swing. Uh, I don't know if you have that. I do. But... Uh, that's called Cascada Gosalandia, and it also was a very remote place that was um, very cool. It was like a double waterfall with double rope swings. Anyway, so I was on a quest to find those kinds of places, and I was looking for one in particular called El Hippie, and I've seen pictures of it, and it's really cool. It's just a huge waterfall with a, with a rope swing. and. Um, as I was driving there, though, the roads got really, really bad. Like they were just buckled up um, and getting really rutted and and broken. And um, I, I was getting more and more remote and away from any place that I was familiar with. And then I noticed that I was losing cell phone service. And um, despite the fact that I really, really, really wanted to see this, my gut suddenly told me that this was not a safe situation, that this was too remote, too dangerous for the car. Right. And with no phone service, I just, um, I made the very difficult decision to turn around and abandon my quest. Um, and as much as I regret not ever seeing El Hippie so far, um, I think I did the right thing. I just felt like it was a good reminder to follow my gut. My gut definitely told me, turn around, this isn't, a good thing right you weren't getting where you wanted and yeah right i think that's right. important that you trust your gut and you'll get there someday <laughs> yeah exactly I'll, I'll have another chance <laughs> and some of those things that don't work out turn into stories just like that that that's became right. a story you can tell um that's right. so we were talking about um places not to miss did we get all of the places that you wanted to share about where to go when you're in puerto rico well, I mean, there's so much, you know, you've got a picture there of the cave. Um, it's called Cueva Ventana. Um, it's this wonderful cave that has a natural window on the back. So you go for, it's about a 20, 30 minute hike. And then you go through the cave and in the back is this window. And through the window, you see this gorgeous view of the valley. Um, I really love Cueva Ventana. And, you know, I find it a fairly easy um adventure thing to do you know uh it doesn't take a lot of um skill or endurance or anything and um it is special i think okay and then my dog is barking and the, my neighbor's dog i don't know if you can hear that but <laughs> we got dog barking um so let me just ask one last question which is <clears throat> in light of the recent um, the hurricane and some of the earthquakes and stuff are, that are, have happened down there, is it still a good time to go and how are they doing with recovering after all of that? Um, yeah, it is a great time to go and in fact they need it. They need the tourism dollars. Um, I went back to Puerto Rico, well I've been back several times since the hurricane and they have, as far as a tourist is, it, um, concerned it has fully recovered all the hotels are back all the restaurants are back um the beaches are beautiful as ever um so it's uh you know people who live there might still be having some 
some issues that they're dealing with. They're still dealing with insurance claims that haven't come through, and there's still work being done to um, make the electrical system more stable. Um, but there is electricity throughout the island, and um, so um, you know they've really recovered from that. Most recently, there have been some um, earthquakes, mostly small. There's been a couple, uh, I think, that were five-ish, but they're mostly very small. Uh, but it's very localized in the southern, southwestern part of the island. So people who I talk to in San Juan and Rincon on the west coast, they um, they aren't even they don't feel the earthquakes at all. So um, and luckily, it hasn't been. You know, I don't think they're been uh, any fatalities or anything like that so um, it's definitely not uh, something that should deter a visitor I mean I will say it is the Caribbean <laughs> so I mean you know anybody who's sort of traveled in those kinds of areas know that sometimes the power goes out sometimes the water goes out you know it's not perfect it's not exactly what we might be used to all the time here but generally um, everything works fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's something you have to be aware of when you're traveling anywhere. You've got Mother Nature and all locations have a different, you know, possibility of there being a problem. Uh, you just right. have to go prepared and know what you're getting into. That's really right. um, all there is. And when we travel after a disaster like that, you're assisting that economy in rebuilding and providing them with what they need to rebuild. So that's a good thing. Absolutely. You know, one thing I'd like to mention is that, um, I like to warn people when they go, is that service is very different. Okay. You know? Um, th things move at a slower pace. It's an island. They aren't in this, you know, hurry, hurry, rush, rush, like we are up here in the United States. Um, if you go to dinner at a restaurant, you know, it, it will probably take you longer than you are accustomed to. And that's just the way it goes. So I always encourage people, you know, to just sit back and relax and then enjoy the ride. <laughs> that if you're looking for, um, if you want to be pampered, go to the resorts. They have that. You can go to the Ritz Carlton. You can go to, um, I mean, they have fabulous, fabulous luxury hotels and you can get pampered. But if you want to, to me, if you want to experience the real Puerto Rico, um, you know, your meal is going to take a couple hours. So enjoy it. <laughs> and I think that's how it is in a lot of other countries. I mean, I think the United yeah. States is very um, special in its rush, rush, rush through, especially yeah. the old meal times. So right. um, I think it's pretty common, especially when I go to an island location or sort of a tropical Caribbean type of vacation. It is slower, but I mean, it's slower in France too. You go to Paris, they are right. not rushing you out of that restaurant right. either. So it's um, your judgment of whether this is good service or not. You, you have to judge it by their terms and not your terms. So, right. But it's interesting because I use Yelp a lot. You know, uh -huh. I use Yelp there, and so many times those are the complaints I see service was slow, service was slow. And I want to say, well, you know, <laughs> where you want it's supposed it's, to be slow. Uh, custom is the you know right right and actually I like it slow I like it that I'm not right. being rushed out it's just a different mentality I think in general um, that you yeah. are not supposed to come in and eat and run that's not right. the experience right <laughs> well thanks for it, it is similar in that you ask, you have to ask for the check right. you know they're not bringing you the check you have to ask for it and it's also I love they have this custom where if you walk into a restaurant when you pass someone who's already dining, you say "Buen provecho." Oh, that's beautiful. Um, just bon appetit. Like, I mean, they just—it's a big custom. It happens all the time. You just tell every person you see who's already dining, <laughs> "Buen provecho." It's, that's so funny. It's, it's funny how those little things matter, right? I have uh, a, uh, an ambulance going by. It's all these fun stuff. I don't know if you can hear all that, but I can hear it. <laughs> Um, okay, well, so let's just pause. We're at a 25 minutes or so, and let's uh, let's see if anybody has any questions. We'll just hang in here, and 